I know how important it is to have the organ delivered to your mission, Father. And even though there is a revolution, I'll get it through to you, somehow. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, hey, boy. Oh, yes, sir. Could you follow me upstairs, please? Yes, sir. I have a bag packed I want you to bring down. I have to hurry. Oh, you ready to leave? Just about. Miss Wong, very worried about this place you go. Or New Mexico? Yes, sir. She's a very strange place. It's no more strange than a lot of places my business takes me. What's she worried about? No, uh, Miss Paladin, uh, Miss Wong worried that you would drink too much brandy and have big hangover. Uh, she say, please remember this. Well, what has that got to do with it? Oh, Miss Wong. Oh, hello, Mr. Paladin. Oh, you friends certainly make mess in this room last night. <laughs> I'm afraid they did, Miss Wong. I'm sorry. We have to pick up some things, then I'm on my way. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Oh, you go that place? Why this sudden concern about where I go? This happens to be an important business assignment. Oh, but Mr. Paladin, that place so strange whole river of brandy a whole river of brandy yes, the rio grande oh, yes, sir. and just where did you get your information mr bagshaw bagshaw the old cowboy gone rich who has the suite on the third floor yes, sir. he sing song all about where you go he teach song to missy wong oh he did yes, sir. what's the song oh, Miss wong not sing as well as mr bagshaw but he's something like this where the coffee grows on the white oak tree and the river flows with brandy. Then it fare you well, my own true love, for I'm bound for the Rio Grande. Oh, a river flow with brandy. I Don't you believe it, hey boy. That river flows with nothing but yellow water. Miss Wong, I'm afraid that is not a factual account of the Rio Grande. Oh, no, sir? No. Grab that bag, will you, hey boy? We have to go. Whenever an assignment took me to the border area, I made it a point to look in on Father O'Toole, parish priest of the lower Rio Grande. So with my, what turned out to be pretty exhausting, business in Laredo finished, I headed for the little mission of St. Xavier. It was a visit I always anticipated with pleasure. Father Francis Michael Thomas O'Toole was one of my favorite people. I found him in the garden behind the church, down on his knees, working in a flower bed. Paladin! Well, now, that's good to see you, lad. Hello, Father. Uh, it's a long time it's been. Ah, too long. Hey, garden is beautiful, Father. You've done a lot of work. Why, well, thank you, my son, but uh, uh, it's a constant fight we must wage against the forces of evil. How's that? Thrip. Thrip? And mealybug. Oh, well, I have never faced up to a mealybug in a fight, Father. I'm afraid I can't be of much help. <laughs> Formidable foe, mealybug. Well, come now. Uh, we'll see to your horse and relay the pleasant message that we're to have a guest for dinner, and then perhaps you'd like a glass of port. Uh, look here, I, I, I put up another hammock in the garden. Uh, I wonder, was I anticipating your visit? Oh, it certainly looks inviting. I just may get in that hammock and never want to move Father, out of it. Father O'Toole! Uh, uh, in the garden, Tono. You remember Tono? Yeah, he's the Indian boy you raised here, of course. Oh, he's a fine young man now. He's just returned to St. Xavier's. He's been in school in Santa Fe. Father O'Toole, uh, Oh, excuse me. Oh, Tono, we have a visitor. Uh, uh, Mr. Paladin, you remember him? Of course. How are you, sir? Hello, Tono. Father O'Toole, I have checked again with the freight office. There is no freight coming through. Oh, dear. Oh, oh dear. Now, that is bad news. Well, what's the trouble, Father? Well, sinful it is, I suppose. But I, I did want to impress the bishop. The bishop? Mm, he's making a tour of the diocese, and... Plans to visit St. Xavier's. Uh, we scrubbed and we polished and we planted and we shined and we toned them. Oh, I had counted on that organ. 
organ? You see, Mr. Paladin, a very generous man made the church a gift of an organ. It was ordered from France and came by steamer to the Gulf of Mexico. And there it sits at the dock. Well, that, that's my punishment for my haughty dreams of making a fine show. <laughs> yeah, why isn't the freight coming through, Tono? Father, there is a revolution in progress between here and the Gulf of Mexico. Ah, well, yeah, that's certainly right for putting too much emphasis on the temporal oh, things. Oh, nonsense. If you plan on that organ, I don't see why a revolution should interfere. Father, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go after him. Oh, no, but Paladin... May I go with you, sir? Well, if it's all right with Father O'Toole. Uh, well, Paladin, you came here for a rest. <laughs> you just keep that hammock swinging, Father. I'll be back. <laughs> Traveling to the Gulf on horseback, Tono and I were able to skirt the battlefield of the Revolution. However, on the return trip, we'd have to take the wagon road, which would lead us directly through the war zone. Still, I couldn't foresee any problem. Father O'Toole was well-known, well-loved, and I was sure that an explanation of our mission would grant us safe conduct. The whole business seemed very simple. That is, it did until we reached the port of Matamoros and ran into the typically Mexican official red tape. Mr. Paladin. Well, now, Tono, what did he say? Now we take these papers to the customs warehouse. And where's that? Across the street there. All right, let's go. How many papers have we signed by now? In duplicate, in triplicate, English and Spanish, translated upside down, sideways, and backwards? Very, very many, but we should be near the end. I hope so. That's the fellow we talked to over there. Yeah, all right. Well, come on. Buenos dias. Yes, uh, I want to take delivery on a crate addressed to St. Xavier Mission. Uh, what, uh, what's he talking about? He says, do we have bill of lading? Oh, look, I've got that. And I've got that uh, for and that. Un have... momento. Uh, Senor, uh, would you mind to step aside for a little minute? But... I have business to transact here. Business important. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I happen to be transacting some muy importante business here myself. Now, if you'll just hold it a little minute, I trust we won't be long. Now, please. Uh, please. Senor, I'm afraid you don't understand. I'm in a hurry. Business importante. Uh, gracias. You're very kind. Gracias. Now, uh, perdone me. How do you like that, Tono? Well, I can see, sir, that the fuse of your temper is getting awfully short, but we might as well be patient a while longer. Uh, of course you're right, Tono. As a matter of fact, I guess it would be funny if I weren't so tired of Why all this. Why don't I this... go to the livery and arrange for a wagon? Save time. All right, we'll need a team. Good, strong horses. Now. I'll see you at the loading docks behind the warehouse. Right. Uh, Perdone me, senor. I believe it is your turn now. Yeah. Gracias. Very much. Now, Mrs. Ames, is that everything? Yes, and it's a small order, but could you send it? Of course. I've been helping my daughter move. That's hard work, and with the nagging backache and muscular aches and pains I've had lately... If it's backache that's making you miserable, better try Doan's Pills. Good advice. That's Doan's Pills, an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. Oh, Mr. Paladin, I'm sorry I took so long. That's all right, Tono. They're just bringing the crates on the docks now. Did you get the team? Yes, yes. But you see, in this town, everything is a little difficult. <laughs> I've discovered that. Where's the wagon? There, uh, by the platform. That one? With the oxen? They'll get us there, Mr. Paladin. Oh, sure. Sure they will. Well, we've managed to get some action. That's our crate on the platform now. Come on. Uh, Tono, those men over there, those cargadors... Yes, sir. I've already paid them to help us load, so uh, you'd better give the orders. 
My Spanish seems to lack authority. Oh, sure. Hey, Tony, look. That man again. He's got his wagon to the platform. Yeah, and he's using my cargo doors to load his crate for him. Hey, uh... Uh, pardone me, senor. Uh, See, si? Those are my cargo doors, mine. Ah, uh, si? Well, but maybe you would stand back there, senor, for just a little minute. Business, important. You see, I'm in such a hurry. Well, it happens that I'm in a bit of a hurry myself. Bueno, well, we won't be long. But those men have been hired to load my crate. They've already been paid. Oh, senor, gracias. That's very kind. Now, now, if you'll just stand back, por favor. Cargadores, vámonos. Uh, cargadores, you load the crate. You were paid to load, right? There. No, aquí, aquí. There. No, aquí. There. Senor. See? Si? What's your name? I am called Pancho. Well, Pancho, like I said to Tono, maybe if I weren't so tired, it'd be funny. But I am. And it isn't. So you just... <laughs> Certainly a lot of excitement around there for a while. Those poor cargadores didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> I'm a little ashamed of that, Tono. Pancho certainly isn't the first man I've hit, but I've usually had better cause. Well, we can't forget about it now. We have the organ, and Father O'Toole will be able to properly impress the bishop. That's right. Now, speaking of Pancho, is he still traveling behind us? No, he veered off to the right back a ways. I wonder what he's hauling through the war zone here. Look, Mr. Paladin. Soldiers. Those are soldiers. Barefooted, armed with pitchforks. These must be the revoltosos, the peon army. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, Tono. I'm for the underdog. I've just decided I'm on their side. Um, do you happen to know what they're fighting for? No, and they have probably forgotten themselves. Pasto! Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, that, that must be the leader coming over this way. Yeah. Well, we'll just explain that we're on business for a St. Xavier mission and ask for safe conduct through the area. Look, Mr. Paladin, we're completely surrounded. Yeah. You know, Tono, those pitchforks don't look very military, but they certainly look effective. I'm glad we have a good explanation for being here. Senores. Uh, buenos dias. You will step down? Sure. Come on, Tono. Yes. You're gone? Well, uh, you let me explain. You're gone. Uh, all right. There. Now, if you will permit me to... You are under arrest. Arrest? We are too clever for you, are we not? We, the army of the people. Oh, believe me, all I need is a chance to explain. No need to explain. We have had war. You bring arms to the militia. The pigs are enemy. Oh, well, no. That's a mistake. We're on an errand for Father O'Toole. We're taking an organ to St. Xavier Mission. The Padre? Yes. Juan Javier? That's right. Organo? Mm-hmm. Mm, very nice. You mind we see organ for San Javier? Ooh. Pedro, abra la caja. Uh, look, uh, tell him to take it easy opening that crate. I don't want anything to happen to that organ. General Perez, rifles. He says rifles. Rifles? Rifles, Mr. Paladin. Rifles? My poor little army is grateful for them, senor. And it will be your honor to face them first, in front of the firing squad. And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Charlie, where have you been? Well, it's a long story, Bergen. Remember, you said you wanted the car lubricated. I said I wanted a Guardian maintenance lubrication. Like all Chevrolets, Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs, and Chevy and GMC trucks, our car deserves the best of service. And that means Guardian maintenance at our dealer service department. Yes, well, I drove our car to our dealers without an accident. Oh, most of the way. Charlie, where's the car now? It's on Main Street between 4th and 5th. Is it closer to 4th or 5th? It's all the way from 4th to 5th. All right, young man, you're going to get it now. <laughs> I'm only kidding, Bergen. It's just a scratch fender. Our dealer's GM trained mechanics have already got it looking like new again. It's part of their quality appearance service. Shall I still meet you in the woodshed? You drove the car without permission. It's the woodshed. Now I'll see you there as soon as I phone the dealer. 
Well, take your time. If you're not there in ten minutes, I'll start without you. <laughs> Without ceremony, we were prodded with pitchforks to a dugout in the side of the hill. It had an iron-barred, padlocked door. By the time my eyes got accustomed to the dark, I had managed to figure out what had happened. The muy importante business of my fat friend, Pancho, was undoubtedly a shipment of arms to the militia. In the confusion at the docks after I slugged him, the cargadores had put his crate on our wagon and our crate on his. If the militia expected rifles, it was a sure thing they weren't too happy when Pancho showed up with a church organ. Not very good food, Mr. Paladin, and not very much. We may starve to death before we reach the firing squad. Look, Tono, we aren't giving up. Father O'Toole has got to impress the bishop. You really think the militia has the organ? That's the only answer. <laughs> this is the darndest war. I've noticed every day about this time all activity seems to stop out there. Everything quiets down. Of course, the siesta. You mean even in the midst of a revolution, everybody stops after lunch to take a nap? Oh, yes, it is the custom. Oh, General Perez seems too disturbed for a siesta. Yes, he has been pacing back and forth out there. Yeah. Hey, hand me one of those tin plates, Tono. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. wh why do you do that? You'll see. Piero, what is this? What does this mean? Uh, General Perez, si. you're starving us to death. You eat as well as my soldiers. You're short of food? You si. see? Well, why haven't we faced the firing squad? If you must know, we are also short of ammunition. Uh, I suspected that. General, would you like to win this war? Of course. All right, I have an idea. There's a plan that may help you, if you let us out of here. What nonsense is this? Even without those guns you confiscated. That militia is well armed. You're never going to beat them with one crate of rifles, no ammunition, and a bunch of pitchforks. I'm afraid that is true, senor. It has more to win a war than a just cause. Let us throw in with you. Will you trust us? Why should I? Now, look, General. You can't afford to feed us. You can't afford to shoot us. You might just as well trust us. Believe me, you won't regret it, General. What can you do? We can go over into the enemy territory. But I cannot give you arms. I know. All we'll need are a couple of buckets. Buckets? Buckets of that adobe soil out there and some water. Uh, senor, the heat is too much for you. No, no, no. I'm not loco, General. Just give us two hours over there. Then bring your men and attack. My poor little army against all those guns, it will mean complete defeat. I think you'll find it will mean complete surrender of the militia. Please trust me. All right, senor. I have nothing to lose. You can try. Well, let's see now. Did you get those rifles stacked by the tents? Yes, yes. And those lying by the guards sleeping over there. These soldiers of the militia are sound sleepers. Yeah, lucky for us. Well, I guess that means we've plugged the barrels of every rifle in the outfit with that adobe mud. Now, in this heat, that adobe will harden and expand. And by the time Perez attacks... The guns of the militia will not perform with efficiency. Uh, even a pitchfork tono is a worthy weapon against a gun that fires backwards. Uh -huh. So I guess we've done our part for the people's army. Now let's look for St. Xavier's organ. It's got to be around here someplace. Mr. Paladin, they're waking up. Yeah. Quick, duck behind that little stone building over there. Come on. Here. Here. You know, maybe we better sit out the battle right here. We'll have to look for the organ after the attack. I hope we can find it. But, Mr. Paladin, I've been thinking. What? Do you know how to play an organ? No. I don't either. Brother Manuel doesn't. Brother Luis doesn't. Well, what are you getting at? Mr. Paladin... I can't think of anyone in the parish who knows how to play an organ. Well, surely Father O'Toole thought of that. Hey. Hey, Tono, listen. It's inside this building. Yeah, there's a window down there. Come on. Be careful. Be careful. Look. It's Pancho. Hey. Hey, Pancho. Buenos dias, senor. What's the idea? Senor 
Punch is the victim of unfortunate circumstance. Tomorrow's the day Punch is to die. They shoot Punch. Uh, sort of the way I had it figured. But what's the organ doing in the cell with you? Well, I made one last request that before I die, I be permitted to play this lovely organ, for which by a strange, unfortunate circumstance, I give my life. The request granted with understanding that I don't play until after siesta. Mr. Paladin, here comes General Perez. You're right on time, eh, Tono? Pancho, you play the organ very well. Well, oh, see, for many years I play organ for the mass at the Cathedral of Our Lady of Guadalupe. You did. Pancho, I think maybe we could use you. How would you like to take a little trip? No trip, senorita. Tomorrow I die. Maybe not, Pancho. The revoltosos are coming on strong, Mr. Paladin. Pancho, listen. I figure to be on the winning team in this revolution. Maybe I can help you. Mr. Paladin, the militia is mowing itself down. Yes, Tono, I see. It's working just the way I hoped it would. They're being knocked down by their own guns. Senor, the people's army is winning. Now Punch will go free, no? Only if you will transact big business with me. Business importante. Oh, muy importante, Pancho. You help us take the organ to Father O'Toole and play it for the bishop. How about it? Si, Pancho will do this. Si, viva la revolucion. Oh, you said it, Pancho. Viva la revolucion. Viva la revolucion. Viva la revolucion. Thirsty people everywhere prefer ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. And because it's light, it refreshes without filling. Charlie, be sociable. I am, Kay. Pepsi is a favorite of thirsty people from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida. Charlie. It's perfect for parties or picnics, so serve Pepsi to your guests. That's helpful, but... This is the sociable part. Keep plenty of Pepsi ice-cold and ready. Remember, it goes fast because everybody likes Pepsi. Singing still sounds more inviting. May I? Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and dead and air. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. But singing doesn't say, pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Better yet, get a case. You do that. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Roth, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story is being presented in two parts and was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Don Diamond, Harry Bartell, Jack Edwards, and Bill Idelson. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> <laughs>